Hello, my creative friends. I'm Heather North from heatherscreativeblessings.com. My card today is inspired by a class over in the Stamp Nation forums. Um, one of the my Dream Team members, Ingrid, did this double stencil technique with ghosting, and I thought it would be perfect for a masculine card that I needed for my father-in-law's birthday. I'll have a link to that tutorial and Ingrid's blog over on my blog in case you're interested in checking either one of those things out. So what I have here is a gear stencil from My Favorite Things and a piece of crumb cake card stock from Stampin' Up. I'm just using post-it tape to tack the stencil in place so it doesn't shift and move. And then I'm going to take some white pigment ink. This happens to be from Fresh Ink, but you could use any white pigment ink that you have on hand and a rather large sponge dauber <laughs> and what I'm doing is I'm pouncing it onto the paper and I'm doing this so it doesn't shift or move too much I'm just pouncing and swirling a little bit and adding that white all over my background and just that white is pretty cool you could leave it like that but I'm not going to I'm going to wash off my stencil and then I'm going to set this aside and let it dry for a while I picked up my kids from school and um, came back. And then I'm lining up the stencil again. You can see how I lined it up right in that space. And then I'm shifting it to the right and down just slightly. And it's probably almost impossible to see um, on the video, but in person you can see that it has shifted just a bit. And what that's going to do when I sponge on this navy ink from Hero Arts is the little bit of white is going to remain behind and cause a ghosting shadow. So again, I've got my, this is a mini distress tool. You could use a different sponge dauber if you have it, whatever way you like to add color on top of a stencil. And I'm kind of pouncing a little bit and then swirling. And I'm being gentle so that I don't pick up any of the little pieces of plastic. If a spot needs a little bit more, I can just go in and pounce and then peel it off and show the reveal. Isn't that cool? I just love that effect where you have just a little bit of that white behind the navy. I'm going to take this cake from Ring in the Celebration by Winnie and Walter and I'm going to just cover up the heart with a piece of post-it tape and then I'm going to ink it up and remove the post-it tape. And this is kind of selective masking. This way, my card for my father-in-law doesn't have a little heart on top of the cakes to make them look more like wedding cakes. This makes it look more like a birthday cake. Um, that was Crumb Cake Ink from Stampin' Up. And now I'm, now I'm gonna play with my fingernails. <laughs> uh, you may have noticed I filmed this um, over a couple of different days because my nail polish color has changed and I was busy in the middle of filming several cards while I was doing this one. Anyways, I'm gonna take the Night of Navy Ink by Stampin' Up because I forgot that I had been using the Hero Arts Navy Ink. <laughs> Basically, use what you have, it all works fine. And the sentiment says, bring on the cake. It's from the Bring on the Cake stamp set by Sugar Pea Designs. And both of those stamp sets, by the way, were made for the Stamp of Approval Young at Heart collection. In hindsight, I probably would have stamped the sentiment first and then done the cakes, but the cakes turned out much cuter than I expected. So I just went ahead and used them. I'm going to cut or trim down my sentiment. And this is very scientific. I just chopped it off where I thought it looked good. <laughs> And then I'm going to turn that piece, that uh, strip, on an angle and trim it again. And I'm kind of following the angle that the cake takes. I thought that was a little bit too plain, um, so I decided to pull out this Knight of Navy cardstock. And again, very scientific here, I just trimmed off a smidge. <laughs> If I had my Stampin' Up! trimmer, I probably would have cut an eighth of an inch, but the smidge technique does work. I'm just going to cut a couple more smidges and layer them onto my card front. I have this bottle of Ranger Multi Matte Medium, and it has a brush tip, I guess is what you would call it brush on the lid so you can just brush your glue or medium right onto your cardstock and what I like about the matte medium is that it does dry clear 
and matte instead of regular glue tends to dry clear and glossy and you can see if you smudge and get some of that ink or the glue outside of where you want it to go I'm just layering one on the top and one on the bottom and I left that sentiment piece just as a placeholder then I'm going to use some paper snips and just snip them off and I'm going to glue my card front to my card base four and a quarter by five and a half once it's folded now I used some Tombow mono multi glue why because that's what I had in front of me and it's what I grabbed <laughs> you could use the you could use either one of these glues and just use that particular glue um, just use what works for you use what you have in your stamp room um, I decided that I wanted to cover up the bottom because I was just a little bit of a gap so I used that last smidge of Knight of Navy cardstock and adhered it to the bottom of my card front and then I added some dimensionals to my sentiment to just pop it a little bit off of that area and my card for my father-in-law is done this is such a cool technique and it's really easy to do so I hope that you will give it a try if you like my card today, be sure and give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel to see more from me. I've got more videos coming soon. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you find some time today to get creative. Bye.